At the moment, there are no treatments that change the course of Parkinson's disease. We've got good treatments that help with the symptoms, but they don't change the ultimate course. And if patients are beginning to develop dementia, we can't stop that. I'm Dr. Ramona Weil. I'm a neurologist and neuroscientist at UCL, working on Parkinson's disease dementia. My vision is to understand how dementia happens in Parkinson's disease. People think about Parkinson's as a movement disorder, but actually people with Parkinson's are six times more likely to get dementia than the general population. And if we really want to get to understand that fully, we need to link together changes that happen in the brain in people living with the condition, which we can do using advanced neuroimaging. And then what we want to do is link that with the proteins that build up in the brain. So we need to obtain measures of protein accumulation from the same patients at the same time. So that one day we could have a patient who comes to my clinic and I'm worried that they're developing Parkinson's disease dementia. And I'd be able to say to that specific person, well, you have this particular pattern of changes. So this new treatment that's been developed will be right for you. Whereas another patient might have a different pattern of changes and then we'd be targeting different treatments. When I was working as a clinical neurologist, I noticed that people with Parkinson's disease not only developed dementia, but actually seemed to have trouble particularly with visual tasks. And that became a much bigger project. And we found that over time, patients who, with Parkinson's disease who had visual problems really did develop cognitive change. And we're now using that in this project to stratify patients so that we can then compare patients with Parkinson's who don't yet have dementia, but do have visual problems so that we can then look at the differences in their brain um, to try to understand the basis of these really early changes. If we take a person with Parkinson's disease and we do a conventional hospital type MRI scan, we don't really see any changes. And in fact, most of my patients in clinic have been told that this MRI scan is normal. But what I'm able to do with this project is use advanced neuroimaging, which starts to provide new information actually about the structures of the tissues. And that's actually allowing us to quantify changes and then I'll be able to link that also to the protein changes. And that's what's really new about this project, to be able to really look at the changes in the tissue composition in patients with Parkinson's disease. So having a Discovery Award has really allowed me to think big and broad about the questions that I'm trying to address. So as well as doing advanced imaging, actually using two different types of MRI scanners, I'm also doing PET imaging, measures of plasma, also measures of cerebrospinal fluid, and also magnetoencephalography. So I'm getting really information across the range of different modalities that are all looking to address the same question. But it's through the Discovery Award that I can really be quite ambitious about the questions that I'm asking. So it was the broadness, the length of time, and also the flexibility of the funding that I could apply it to a question that is clinically important, but also of importance to neuroscience as well.